Good afternoon from Khalifa Industrial Zones, Abu Dhabi. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. My name is Khaled Al Marzugi. I am the commercial director at Kizar. I will be your host for today's webinar. Today we have with us interesting panels, experts from the food industry. They will aim to provide you with the latest trends and the business opportunities in the food sectors. Also, yourself can interact with us through the Q&A panels. You can type your questions and we will address them at the end of the sessions. Also, after the event, there will be a short survey of around four to five questions. Also, there you can address your questions. We'll take all those questions that we couldn't address here during the event and the one in the survey. We'll get their answers and send them, send them to you. When you put your questions, please address us to all the panelists, not to a specific one. So I can see it and I can take it forward at the end of the sessions. If you want to address the question to a specific one, just put the options of all panelists, just put the name of the person you want to address the question so I can mention him also during the Q&A. Ladies and gentlemen, since the establishment of United Arab Emirates, the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan drive the country to grow the food industry and grow the supply chain. His attention to the agriculture and the environment is the main driver of the fact that the country invested heavily in the agriculture productions, increasing the number of its farm from 4,000 to more than 3,000 uh, to more than 35,000 today, of over an area more than 100,000 hectares. Today, UAE became one of the strongest markets for the food industries. We are among the top countries when it comes to the standard of living. If you are here in UAE, you will know that there is around 200 nationality live here in UAE. People here are expecting and actually always demanding the growth of the food sectors, whether it is manufacturing, distributions, retailer, all the way to all the also the anything related to the service sectors, which is related to the food, the whole supply chain. Yes, UAE, as I mentioned, is a big consumer market for the food sectors. But as you know, UAE is actually a gateway to the Middle East and Africa region. It's considered the industrial and manufacturing hub for all sectors, including the food. Today, UAE export food to more than 130 countries, with Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Oman, Afghanistan being in the top markets. Within Abu Dhabi, envisioned as a hub of food processing, storage, distributions, Kizad Food Cluster has significant growing in recent years, and many large-scale food companies and beverage companies actually have selected us, have selected Kizad to be their home for the region. Not to mention that we have also a lot number of SME that have been developed with NKZAD and also growing in the regions. My colleague from KZAD will provide more details in these subjects. As now we are driving into the subject, let's hear Mr. Krishna, Executive Director, Alpin Capital, who will, take, who will talk about the emerging trends in the food sector in the GCC and the Middle East. Over to you, Mr. Krishna. Thank you, colleagues. A very good afternoon to everybody who's joined us on the webinar. The uh, presentation is structured to provide everyone with an overview on the GCC food industry, followed by an overview on the UAE food industry, where we will be touching upon the consumption, production, and import statistics on the food industry. We will then briefly touch upon the food security initiatives that the GCC governments are looking at, followed by the trends and challenges that we have witnessed uh, in the GCC food industry in the last few years. Food consumption in the GCC grew at a CAGR of 5% between 2011 and 2016 to reach 49 million metric tons by 2016, implying an annual consumption of almost 900 kilograms of food per person. Within the region, Saudi Arabia accounted for about 64% of the total consumption, whereas UAE accounted for about 17%. Between the categories, cereals have remained a staple food item, given the Arab and Asian expatriate population in the region. 
and therefore the consumption of cereals and meat grew at a much quicker pace between 2011 and 2016 than a dairy, fruits, and uh, vegetables segment. So demand for food uh, has remained strong in the region owing to population growth, high per capita income, as well as rising tourist arrivals. The population in the region grew at a figure of 2.6% between 2013 and 18, and reached almost 57 to 58 million by 2018. The per capita income per se is estimated or was estimated around 20, uh, uh, in 2018 at $55,000, which is by far more than 20% higher than the average of the advanced economies in the world. Vis-a-vis -vis production, production in the GCC grew at a CAGR of 2.8%, so much lower than the growth in consumption, which was at 5%. Arable land averaged around 15% of the total land area in the GCC region. In terms of statistics, only 1% of the total land area in GCC was under cultivation in 2016. Out of the total production, by size, uh, Saudi accounted for almost 73% of the total production, whereas UAE accounted for only 7%. The share of Oman, Kuwait, and Qatar has obviously increased due to their efforts to improve productivity. And the share of Saudi Arabia has slightly declined on account of uh, reduction in the overall, uh, overall acreage for uh, production. The GCC produced almost 25% of its total food consumption in 2016, which is what we call the self-sufficiency ratio. But this has declined from 28% uh, in 2011. The decline has primarily been on account of the increased uh, increase in consumption, which was much higher than the production. Of the categories, vegetables, fruits, and dairy accounted for 63% of the total food produced in the region. The adverse climatic conditions in the region and uh, the lack of uh, water resources obviously limit production, and therefore the region has remained highly dependent on imports. Net food imports in the region grew at a CAGR of 5.2%, much higher than uh, the growth in consumption as well. UAE and Saudi Arabia collectively accounted for more than 80% of the region's net imports between 2011 and 2016. Within the categories, cereals and dairy remained the most important food items, accounting for almost 55% and 12% respectively. The volume of net food imports in Oman, Qatar, and Bahrain, in fact, grew much faster than in Saudi Arabia and UAE. The net imports by value grew at a CAGR of 3% to reach almost $30 billion by end of 2016. With respect to UAE, food consumption grew at a CAGR of 3.8% between 2011 and 2016 to reach almost 8.2 million metric tons. Fruits and cereals in the categories accounted for about 53% of the total food consumed. And UAE as a, as a country, as I mentioned earlier, accounted for almost 17% of the total food consumed in the region. The primary drivers for this has been the influx of tourists, rising health awareness, and the increasing number of working couples uh, UAE population grew at a CAGR of 2.9%. The estimates uh, in 2018 were almost 10.10 10 and a half million people. Expatriates, which account for 85% of the UAE's population, also increased the demand for a variety of cuisines. In terms of production, the UAE produced about 11% of its total food consumed of 8.2 billion metric tons in 2016. And within the food categories, as we can see in the chart here, they were mostly self-sufficient in dairy, where they produced almost 34% of their total requirements. The net import volume grew at a CAGR of 3.1% to reach almost 9.4 million metric tons in 2016. The GCC governments have introduced various food security initiatives as well as investments to achieve self-sufficiency. As we know, food production has been challenging in the region, primarily on account of limited arable land, the lack of fresh water, water resources, and the climatic conditions. The GCC countries have taken various steps to introduce new and innovative methods of production, which include drip irrigation, vertical farming, seawater harvesting, groundwater management, et cetera, which some of my panelists will talk about in the, in the presentation going forward. Efforts are also being, sorry. Efforts are also being made to develop the overall food supply chain in the region some through policy initiatives where they're looking at increasing storage facilities, developing food parks, and others by investing in cultivable lands across the African and Asian countries. In particular, UAE and Saudi Arabia have been very active in investing in, in farmlands outside of the region, particularly in Africa and Asia. In terms of the trends, 
There has been a growing attention on food security and food, uh, the import substitution. Apart from the geopolitical concerns and the import dependency, the COVID impact that the region has seen in the last six months has made food security a priority for the entire GCC region, especially in the UAE. Food processing segment has also seen an upsurge in terms of demand and focus. A lot of companies are investing in major food processing facilities to augment their domestic production as well as supply. And a lot of international firms are also building up capacities to serve the regional market as well as become a re-export hub. Food preferences have also seen a, a dramatic shift with the rising incidence of obesity and diabetes and lifestyle related diseases. Uh, the demand for healthy and organic food is on the rise. The governments are also trying to lower the rate of obesity and diabetes through policy initiatives. For example, they've levied heavy taxes on certain goods such as carbonated drinks. And as a consequence, organic food has witnessed an accelerated demand. To give you an example, the number of organic farms in the UAE itself in the first half of 2019 grew by 53%. The other trend that we have seen is the efficiencies in food distribution on account of digital innovations. Throughout the GCC, and especially in the UAE, more than 87% of food operators are listed on food apps, and more than 60% of consumers use online apps to, to, to order food. And this trend is only expected to grow, especially given the last six months that we've seen uh, on account of the COVID impact. The other two segments that have seen growth has been the packaged food segment, primarily on account of the growing urbanization, hectic lifestyles, and the increase in number of working couples in the region. And the private label segment has seen an upsurge in growth, primarily on account of the consistent growth in the modern retailing concept. The private label segment has become an important source of revenue for most of the, of the, of the large retailers in the region. In terms of challenges, the reliance on food imports is, is, is the prime most challenge that the region, region faces. The extreme weather conditions, limited arable land, and inadequate water supply uh, resources, as I mentioned, result in less food production and therefore make the region highly dependent on food imports to the extent of about 85%. In terms of statistics, the region has been facing a water deficit up to 20 billion cubic meters, making them heavily reliant on desalination, which itself requires a lot of uh, energy utilization. The food import bill in the region has increased at a cake of 3.1%, and therefore the dependence on high food, uh, food imports exposes the entire region to global food price fluctuations. Coupled with that, the pandemics like COVID-19 and geopolitical risks make the trade routes highly vulnerable in the region. Any disruption in that could cause an adverse impact on the supply chain in the region. Another challenge has been the economic slowdown that the region has faced in the last few years. The extended period of low oil prices has led to fiscal consolidation by the governments, introduction of taxes, rationalization of costs, subsidies, public wages, and therefore a subdued job market, which is therefore impacting the consumer spending behavior, as well as the profitability of domestic producers. Additionally, the ongoing trade war between US and China can also have its spillover effects in the region. And lastly, a strong dollar could negatively impact tourist arrivals from across the globe into the region. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Krishna, for the insight, the presentations. Thank you very much, uh, Krishna, actually, for covering a lot of good insight and on some financial facts. So, good afternoon, uh, everyone. My name is Majid Bin Kamal, Senior Project Manager from Food and Water Security Office. It's a pleasure uh, to be able to talk with you today, although we are not able to meet and interact in person. But thanks to the technology, you know, we're able to still meet. Ladies and gentlemen, the food security is one of the most, is one of the most pressing concerns. At present, our country imports around 90% all our food, uh, which our country consumes. The high level of uh, dependency makes us vulnerable to disruptions in food supply chains, something that is particularly significant at this present time and highlight of ongoing uh, coronavirus crisis. Uh, we thank our leadership for building great infrastructure, allowing us to import and export uh, food. 
um, and for having industrial zones that are ready for private firms to establish and bring their businesses to the UAE. I'll start with the food security uh, definition. Food security is enabling all citizens and residents to have access to sufficient, safe, and nutritious food for an active and healthy life at, at affordable prices in all time, including emergency and crisis. But what exactly is food security? Uh, we can see that food security exists when we have the four elements of availability, access, stability, and utilization. Availability having sufficient quantities of food at appropriate quality. Access is ability to acquire uh, appropriate food for, um, for a nutritious diet. Stability, the absence of threats to availability and access of food. Utilization, the ability to effectively use food resources to meet nutritional needs. Why food security is a global issue? Um, as Michael Krishna also mentioned, by 2050, global food systems will need to feed more than 9 billion people. There were 821 million undernourished people in the world by 2018. Climate change. Currently, 40% of the world land mass is arid, and rising temperature will turn yet more of it into deserts. Uh, at current rates, the amount of food we are growing today will feed only half of the population by 2050. Water depletion. More than 1.2 billion people lack access to clean drinking water. Uh, in UAE, according to the World Bank, the agriculture sector consumes 83% of total water uh, of the country compared to the domestic and industrial sector. To meet the demand for fresh water in the UAE, we, on, we rely only on produced by desalination, by, by water produced by desalination, a process that is energy intensive and not climate friendly. Food loss and waste, of course, an estimated one third of food produced is lost. This incredible waste is the face of 800 million people going to bed hungry every night. If we were just to save 25% of what we waste, we'd be able at zero hunger. The UAE is committed to contributing to cutting down food waste and has a target of recycling 75% of food waste by 2021. So the UAE has identified two things to disrupt food systems. The way we produce food, we need to produce food more sustainable and with less water. The way we consume and our eating habits. But we need to feel guilty when we throw food away. The UAE food security strategy. So, sorry. So to start with, the use food security strategy has established a framework and key players to address in order to ensure food security in the in the short term and long term. It was developed in collaboration with prominent decision makers, academics and experts, both government and private entities. The food security strategy was developed in November 2000, uh, established in November 2017. So the strategy focuses on three elements of food security, consumption, production, and nutrition. In UAE, we have more than 200 nationalities, and to be able to feed, we have established the new food security uh, food uh, basket, which can comprise of 25 main food items. You notice that uh, we have added new items. Previously, it was made 18 main food items, but we noticed in the few months ago, we've seen an increase in the demand, and we included some items also that has high shelf life. The strategy comprises, uh, the strategy is based on five main pillars. Pillar one, facilitating global agribusiness trade by increasing the contribution of strategic investments from overall imports, as well as increasing secure target alternative international sources. Pillar two, diversifying the sources of imports, food, and developing sustainable local production, and increasing efficiency of local ecosystems by increasing production 
of strategic crops. Reducing food loss and waste, that's also one of the SDGs goals. Ensuring safe safety by reducing consumption of unhealthy food and reducing food safety. And the last pillar is uh, the readiness and enhancing our capacity to address food risk and crisis. Um, the e-food security strategy has five enablers. The, the food security governance model, which I will explain later. It's basically a, a governance model, uh, research and development agenda, a food security database, of course, for building or for having any good policies, you need data, building human capacity, and creating food movement programs. The Emirates Food Security Council, which I mentioned, it's our governance model. It's playing a major role in ensuring that food continues to be available to all during the current crisis. We have entities from federal and local Emirates. The Council works accordingly to carefully consider priorities, plans, and programs that take into account several strategic directions, such as food and water security, emergency and crisis, strategic stocks, food safety, diversify of food imports and nutrition. All these entities and our members in the Food Security Council, they work together to achieve the food security strategy. With the Council purpose also uh, proposes regulations, legislations and policies that enhance the food security in the UAE. Uh, it conducts specialized risk studies on global challenges in food security, such as climate change and drought. Adopting technology. The UAE is actively promoting the adoption of the latest technology as part of its national food security strategy. Examples of agri-tech. Vertical farms. Vertical farms considerably reduce the use of water with plants grown in vertically stocked layers in the indoor environment. Vertical farms typically use artificial light, temperature cool humidity regulation, which enables the production of vegetables in large quantities without the need of soil, sunlight, and chemicals. Advanced robotics. The latest agriculture robotics enables uh, the efficient data collection of growth development of crops. So they seed, feed, and weed individual plants. They also milk cows, raise chickens, and process eggs and poultry for food. Advanced robotics treat soil and crops selectively as, as per their requirements and reduce the need of manual labor. Aquaculture area system. Aquaculture is the farming of fish, um, aquatic plants, algae, and other organisms in fish water and salt water under controlled conditions. Advancing research and development. Research and development is a cornerstone of Arctic, one of the most exciting areas of agriculture to be involved in. Seawater in UAE, we have the Seawater Innovation Center, which is in Abu Dhabi Master City. Um, fish and shrimp raised at the facility provide nutrition of salicornia plants and can contribute to UAE food production, while salicornia plants provide also fuel. The International Center for Biocellian Agriculture um, has joined forces with BGI, the world's largest genomics organization, to establish an advanced genomics center in, in, in the country to research. Marine Innovation Park as well, also uh, of Sheikh Khalifa Marine Research Center, was established to be the leading and the unique center in the region for IND in bioscience and technology innovation and marine science and research. The National Food Strategy is already showing its worth. In December last year, it was announced that the UAE has lived 10 places of Global Food Security Index, moving from the 31st to position 21st. An incredible achievement, such in a short space of time. With this rate of progress, we are well on course to become the world's most food secure nation within 30 years of Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the session. I'd like Thank the TISA team for giving me the opportunity to attend this webinar session and speak. Thank you. Thank you, Majid. And also, I would like to say thank you, Krishna. Uh, it is always uh, reassuring to know the level of thoughts and the emphasis that the government is putting into the food security. 
Before moving to our next speaker, I just want to say that we are glad to see that more than 220, almost 220, 230 attending the event. Today we have a companies attended actually from our local market. We have companies attended from India, Europe, Europe, especially Poland, and also other countries in Asia, uh, including also Australia. Just to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome your questions and we look forward to them. You can type your questions in the Q&A panel and we'll address them in the end of the sessions, which is actually dedicated for the Q&A. Generally, all, all great projects are only achieved as uh, public-private partnerships. Knowing this fully well, the government also encouraged the private sector to play its role in food security and the development and the support of the EU economy, and has therefore focuses in the economy aspects of all the industrial as well. So now let's hear from Mr. Salvatore, Agri-Tech Sector Lead at the Abu Dhabi Investment Office, who will take us through the initiatives and the incentive for food sectors in Abu Dhabi. Over to you, Salvatore. Thank you so much, Khaled and, and Kizad and everybody else on the panel. It's uh, very exciting to see all of us together and show how strong the, the ag tech ecosystem is in Abu Dhabi. So like my other panelists have been saying, agriculture and the focus on innovation in agriculture is not something that is new to Abu Dhabi. Since the founding of our nation and from our founding father, late Sheikh Zayed, we have had a focus on agriculture and he himself said, give me agriculture and I will give the civilization. In Abu Dhabi now, the ag tech opportunity is, is real, not only as some of the, my colleagues have pointed out, that we are rising in the ranks of the Global Food Security Index. We are um, increasing, or increasing our local production and we have year-on-year -year growth, but also in, in terms of the way that Abu Dhabi can be attractive to investors and to businesses that are looking at the agricultural space. We have preferred agricultural land allocation, specific areas like in Kizad, where we have uh, agricultural zones that are dedicated to the space. We have favorable tariff structures and looking at the um, operating costs as well, electricity, land, water costs. We have a lot of collaborative support. This panel shows you that we have people from all over the government who are working together to ensure that there is an entire system of support that is given to players in this field. We also have mature logistics industry in terms of what can be imported, how we can uh, work in connecting companies in Abu Dhabi to the wider world. We are within a few hours of almost the entire population of, of this part of the world. We also then have a significant amount of partnerships with research organizations such as UAEU, which has its own College of Agriculture in Alain, and as well as other research organizations in Abu Dhabi and around the world. Within the Abu Dhabi Investment Office, we focus on two key sectors within ag tech. One is indoor and vertical farming. Uh, we look at closed environment agriculture, indoor farms. We also look at greenhouses and adapted greenhouses. And then the second subsector is precision agriculture. So this can be drone technology, sensing technology, anything that is bringing um, new technologies to help local farmers to really minimize the research utilization and increase um, their sustainability on the critical resources such as, as water. We focus on these two sectors because we see a lot of growth uh, in them globally, and we're looking for Abu Dhabi to be able to emerge as a regional leader in desert and arid climate agriculture, and as well as to not only affect the, the problems that we face here in Abu Dhabi, but to be able to produce globally exportable technologies that can be used to help food security around the world. The way that we at the investment office support companies is in financial incentives as well as non-financial. In the financial incentives, we ourselves have a rebate program where we are able to do it on a pay and reclaim basis, cover percentages of key cost centers that businesses might have. So for example, we have announced in April $100 million to four companies that we are supporting that will be expanding or growing here in Abu Dhabi. We are able to give companies two kinds of rebate support. One is on innovation cost centers, so that would be payroll, CapEx, we're able to cover percentages of that that is done here in Abu Dhabi. We're also able to look at cost competitiveness rebates. So that would be covering things like utilities, land, or any other areas that might be uh, 
able to kind of move the needle and push the impact on a business plan that somebody is looking at having. In addition to the support that we give at Audio, we also work very closely with our ecosystem partners that give equity investments or other kind of financial incentives so that we can have a really a, a one Abu Dhabi approach and give the investor the entire menu of options that are available to them. In terms of the non-financial incentives, we have an investor concierge team that is able to help all companies to try and establish, to try and get registered, to handhold them through the entire process of becoming a business in Abu Dhabi and becoming successful. We also work with our ecosystem partners on regulations. So looking at all the different uh, regulators that are involved in, in the agricultural space that are involved in, um, in technology and in business and making sure that all the policies are in line with allowing businesses to succeed. And then we also look at potential exemptions to government fees or government requirements that we might be able to give to a company to be able to unlock their success here in Abu Dhabi. What's very important, and again, what this panel and my like fellow panelists show is the huge importance of the ecosystem enablement. We all need to work together and we all are working together in order to provide the best of Abu Dhabi to all investors that are coming. So we work with the facilitators, with the strategy companies, with the strategy entities within the government. We work with other funding partners that might be focused on agriculture. We work with all of the free zones. We work with the research organization and with other private sector players to make sure that any company that is entering into Abu Dhabi is able to be uh, helped by all of the people that uh, are relevant to its success. In terms of the process of how we work with companies, we can talk to any company that is looking to either expand to Abu Dhabi or grow in Abu Dhabi. So international companies or domestic companies, we will then collect initial information through uh, an application form and through a uh, follow up meetings with the company to ask specific questions to understand what is their business plan, what is their conceptual plan, what is the financial investment plan. What will their impact on Abu Dhabi be and what will their ecosystem requirements be? We are then able to tailor an incentive package and make a really bespoke offering to each company to see what exactly is the, the way that can support their growth in Abu Dhabi. And then we're able to sign the incentive program agreement with the companies that gives a certain number of years of support that we will continue to, to give this percentage of uh, repayment on the key cost centers that we're covering. And then throughout the entire relationship, we will always have a dedicated relationship manager for each company to handhold them through the entire process, to handhold them through the ecosystem, and to be of whatever kind of support that we at Audio or more broadly within the Abu Dhabi government and within the Abu Dhabi ecosystem that we can. So that's a lot of information. I'll pass it now on to, to my colleagues and the other panelists. Um, if you have any questions, please let us, let us know. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much uh, for the insight, Mr. Uh, Salvatore. Speaking now about the incentives uh, available to the companies looking to set up in Abu Dhabi, I would like to call my colleague, Mr. Mansour Almara. Mansour Almara is the head of the food cluster at Kizad. He will tell us more about uh, how Kizad is actually creating new and more possibilities, business possibility in the food sector. Over to you, Mansour. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Khaled. And uh, we're really thrilled and very happy to be here uh, with you, although virtually, but covering an extremely important uh, topic that we are uh, we are going through today in our uh, you know webinar that covers an extremely important you know topic, especially through the event of this unprecedented situation that we went through during the COVID-19 situation. Uh, I believe the food sector has been always at the prime forefront of uh, uh, every national uh, strategy. As we've seen and heard from our colleagues here uh, in the webinar, uh, there are national strategies and incentives that are shared to, uh, to enhance and develop the infrastructure and the investment portfolio of the food sector. And we as Abu Dhabi Ports and Kizad play an important role in terms of sharing our services and offerings and facilities. So uh, to begin with, uh, just uh, going back to what our colleagues has referred to, uh, the UAE and Abu Dhabi has played major role in its national food security strategy and made leap, leap jumps over the years in their ranking from 31st to 21st 
uh, globally in, in a couple of years. And, and that was driven also through our uh, national and local strategy in terms of ease of doing business and other elements that are very important uh, and supports the uh, industry, the food sector, and all other uh, investments. Uh, Abu Dhabi and UAE is a very dynamic and ever-growing uh, uh, nation. Uh, we have uh, a very uh, cosmopolitan uh, environment. Uh, we have a great pool of, uh, of experts and, and resources that supports the growth of the industry. Uh, and, and, and we anticipate that uh, the investment portfolio that uh, that is covered through Abu Dhabi and the UAE allows for major investments uh, attraction in, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, to look at our strategy uh, from uh, a different uh, level, uh, Abu Dhabi today uh, stands uh, at the forefront of investment attraction, so we're open to all types of investments. Uh, we have uh, a focus on certain uh, industries. Food is, is definitely at the forefront of, of the investments. Uh, we have uh, very friendly laws and rules and regulations. So these rules and regulations support uh, a lot of industries uh, uh, throughout the process. Uh, there are no corporate and, uh, and uh, income taxes in Abu Dhabi uh, and the UAE in general. And also uh, the VAT, uh, which has been implemented a few years back, is only uh, set at 5%. Uh, if we look at financing, also financing, we support uh, with our public and private uh, you know, uh, uh, MOUs and joint ventures. Uh, we have a lot of agreements with uh, multiple uh, funding uh, banks and, and funding uh, uh, parties that finance different type of, of projects within Kizad. And that basically resembles uh, around our strategy in allowing for further uh, uh, enhancement of our investments. Also, our monetary policy is very, uh, is very, uh, is, you know, strong. We have, uh, we have uh, our currency pegged at the U.S. dollars, so there is no issue with that. And we've got uh, a very clear uh, uh, system that allows for financing different projects. If we move ahead with our uh, portfolio and we see uh, our uh, our offering. Uh, basically, Abu Dhabi ports and Kizad resembles what we call the integrated maritime and industrial ecosystem. And with that, uh, we uh, at Abu Dhabi ports and our industrial cluster level, uh, we uh, develop and operate various uh, commercial ports within the Emirate of Abu Dhabi, uh, but also we uh, run a various large type of uh, industrial and logistics sectors that enhance the growth of uh, the food sector and other sectors within the national uh, economy. Uh, if we look at our uh, industrial cluster that falls under Abu Dhabi Ports portfolio, KZAD and our sister company Zones Corp compromises of over 500 square kilometers of development. We've got over 1,400 companies already established up and running. Uh, these companies ranges in different sectors. Uh, we've got over 143 billion investments already attracted, and large part of our development is covering uh, a free zone area, which is almost 100 uh, square kilometer. Uh, it's very important also to emphasize that uh, our national industrial and, and port marine strategy is linked with Abu Dhabi 2030 strategy, and therefore enhances our uh, key offering to our investment as part of our FDI attraction uh, strategy. Uh, at the port, which is Khalifa port, Khalifa port is the main port of, uh, of Abu Dhabi and gateway to Abu Dhabi and to the region. We have uh, major uh, developments that allows the enhancement of uh, import, storage, and distribution for food-related industries. Uh, Khalifa port is a container uh, terminal and multi-mode uh, uh, cargo port. Uh, there are major investments that were uh, attracted through MSC and Costco mainly. Uh, the port is, uh, has been operation since 2012. It is very well integrated with, uh, with the global ports. We've got over 1,000 port-to-port -port connectivity. Uh, the initial capacity was around 2.5 uh, million containers, and we anticipate that the port will grow at, uh, at uh, a compounding, uh, tripling this capacity to around 9 million containers within, within five years, uh, mainly driven by the growth of uh, uh, the transshipment also uh, capacity within the port. 
Uh, another major development that we have uh, gone through and, and uh, we've developed uh, recently is basically uh, we have signed an agreement with Arabian Chemical Terminal to develop a liquid uh, uh, tank terminal within Khalifa port. Uh, this will enhance our, our logistics and storage offering within Khalifa port for the food sector because uh, they're going to develop large 83,000 cubic meter capacity, approximately 44 tanks within the port. Uh, this will allow for all liquid bulk imports for food producers, importers, distributors, uh, and will cover people uh, falling under the edible oil uh, sector, uh, additives, and others. So this is uh, this is coming up and will uh, enhance also our our offering within the port for all food related sector. Uh, investors and, and interested parties. Also, another another major advancement that we are progressing is basically we are expanding our South Key and Khalifa logistics uh, part. Uh, this will have a direct access berth for people interested into establishing uh, dry bulk storage for silos covering you know pulses, rice, lentil, and other dar uh, dry bulk storages. Uh, these plots uh, do have direct access to berth and will uh, provide also opportunities for long-term lease uh, options and will allow people to uh, to create their strategic reserves and, and storage within the port. If we look at uh, the slide here, we'll see uh, the expansion is highlighted in, in red. Uh, this is where uh, the expansion is ongoing. It is anticipated to be completed in the next uh, few months. And we are uh, happy and, and, and willing to engage with uh, people interested into establishing any uh, main dry uh, bulk storage or, or, or certain processing uh, facilities within the port. If we look at our uh, key industries in Kizad, we cover uh, multiple industries within our portfolio, and, and, that, and this covers uh, different sectors ranging from polymers, food, uh, logistics, and, and metals. But uh, although uh, most of these industries are important, the food has been always at the heart of, uh, of our development and the national strategy. Uh, and therefore, we've made a lot of uh, investments and efforts in terms of uh, enhancing our offering within the food sector. So Khalifa Industrial Zone, uh, uh, branded as Kizad, uh, stretches over two major segments, which we call Area A and Area B, strategically located halfway between Abu Dhabi and Dubai, and stretches over 416 square kilometer. Uh, area A is our initial phase of development that we have completed uh, and leased out approximately over 70% of the area, which is integrated to Khalifa port. And Area B, we have uh, uh, currently just finalized our master plan and we are rolling out our infrastructure that will look after different type of industries and, and specifically there will be a huge segment for the food sector also uh, investments. If we look at uh, our food cluster in Area A and our development, basically the food cluster in Area A stretches over 2.5 million square meter. Uh, this food sector uh, goes uh, and covers different type of industries. Uh, we've got approximately 30 uh, companies up and running in the food sector. Uh, these companies range from uh, processing into distribution and other uh, also uh, segments within the food. Uh, if we look at some of the examples we have within Kizad in terms of our uh, food uh, uh, cluster, uh, we've got a quite range and diverse portfolio of food-related investors. Uh, uh, within the food processing, we already have uh, people like uh, Pinar, which they do uh, different type of dairy products. We've got Sadia, which is very well known for their poultry processing uh, facility in, uh, in, in Kizad, uh, targeting mainly UAE and the GCC region. And we've got other also uh, players such as NFPC and Benghati uh, within the food processing. Central kitchens also uh, are, are attracted to our value proposition, mainly because of our uh, strategic location to their consumption market. So we've got people like NCC and Southern Food Chicken. Uh, within the storage and distribution, we've got also a few companies such as Spinners, uh, Al Ainkob, Al Dahra, which mainly uh, selected Kizad as a central location for their storage and distribution to the uh, local markets and regional markets. Uh, also, importantly, uh, we do uh, allow a lot of uh, you know added value and integrations, and therefore the food sector relies mainly 
uh, on, on packaging and labeling, and that's a big part of the food offering. And therefore, we've got also companies within our portfolio uh, that produce different type of paper-based packaging, such as uh, Gulf printing and packaging. And we've got also Emirates printing forms that produce different type of uh, paper labeling for the food sector. Uh, we've got also uh, one very important and strategic sector that we look at, and uh, it is growing. Uh, Mr. Majid uh, have covered it also, and uh, Sal. Uh, the ag tech sector is growing, and it is a big part of the national uh, food security strategy. And we've seen that uh, through our uh, strategic value proposition and, and our enhance, enhancing our offering, uh, we can uh, play a vital role in growing that sector. And therefore, uh, through funding from ADIO, uh, a couple of companies have already selected Kizad as their location. Uh, Madar Farms is currently developing their uh, largest indoor tomato facility in Kizad, and RNZ are going to develop their uh, uh, organic fertilizers uh, that will also feed within this sector. So uh, what do we offer at Kizad uh, in a nutshell? We offer uh, different type of products. Uh, we've got uh, service plots uh, that covers basically uh, either industrial or logistic cluster. These are fully developed uh, plots covering, you know, uh, uh, all the infrastructure required for people who wants to establish either manufacturing, logistics, and distribution hubs. Uh, these uh, plots are, are governed by a long-term lease agreement that can go up to 50, year, 50 years and can be also uh, renewable at a very competitive lease rate. And these agreements are also uh, registerable and, and can facilitate finance from different uh, local banks. Uh, also, what we have is basically uh, people who are interested to establish their facilities with pre-built units. We have a large portfolio of pre-built facilities covering warehouses and LIUs. These facilities are, are, are built uh, by us. Uh, they are a core and shell plug and play concept. Uh, people can lease out those facilities and utilize them either for storage or, or for light industrial uh, facilities. Uh, in addition, also, uh, we've got uh, uh, for people who want to start either as a startup or, a, or an SMEs, uh, they can uh, establish their business within our free zone uh, that can cover anything from general trading, uh, service provider, uh, consultancy, and others that allows for them to start and then grow their business uh, as they progress within uh, within our uh, zone and the region. Uh, all of these offerings are, 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 are also covered and supported by our concept of the one-stop shop. And that is very important because we understand that, you know, investors coming to the region, especially from uh, abroad, uh, uh, they want a very uh, seamless approach, uh, one single window of approach in terms of approvals. And therefore, our business center with the one-stop shop concept allows for the entire permitting and single location processing uh, of, of, the, of the approvals. And therefore, uh, this is also uh, integrated with our MACTA gateway, which is our uh, digital platform for all our processes. And therefore, many of these uh, permits can be facilitated online uh, without uh, even uh, coming to uh, the building. So what are the advantages of the food cluster at Kizad? Uh, mainly we cover uh, very, com we provide very po competitive power and water tariffs with long-term visibility. And that's very important for manufacturing facilities so that they understand what do they expect today and what is anticipated in the 10, 20, 30 years down the road. Uh, we've got uh, Aman Lab, which is a certified laboratory for all related testing and inspection for quality. So any imports, any final product inspection and quality can be uh, governed and done through Kizad uh, within our location. Uh, all of your raw material, uh, either it is uh, to go into your production or machinery uh, that will go uh, for the production of your facility is exempted from, from duties uh, within Kizad. Uh, there is also seamless inspection and clearance process. Uh, so we've got uh, a good coordination with the Abu Dhabi Customs and Adafsa team. They uh, cover uh, this part and, and we've integrated a quite good process that allows for quite smooth import and inspection process. There is no direct income tax or corporate tax. Uh, today, uh, the government uh, of the UAE and within Abu Dhabi, also local jurisdiction, they have uh, allowed and enabled foreign investors to invest in the food sector, uh, both in mainland and 
uh, within the free zone without the need of a local partner. So that's also a major added advantage because this can give you the privilege of producing a product in a made in UAE standard and status and export to GCC region uh, without imposing any, any dues. Uh, also, we've got a, a good portfolio of logistic providers, uh, people like uh, uh, Miko, Agility, uh, and other also big players. Uh, they provide different type of storages, uh, cold storages, uh, that can facilitate also your trade and your activities within Kizad. We expand as we grow. We're always growing in Kizad, and therefore uh, we are uh, carrying out a large number of uh, development within our portfolio. We have a huge uh, new cold storages that are coming up. These are under construction for large warehouses, will be ready by uh, early uh, next year, and, and we're developing also a huge portfolio of plot areas for warehouses and showrooms uh, also that will allow for people to uh, lease out areas for their storage and, and showroom uh, requirement. So what do we do at Kizad? We're basically building a community, a community that revolves around developing the entire uh, amenities that is uh, needed by all investors. This covers uh, everything that is related to residential, social areas, landscapes, Leisure facilities, as we see on the right side, uh, we've got this is a render photo of our truck plaza, which will be the largest uh, in the country that will serve all trucks uh, going through the zone and to the port. Uh, and we are uh, we have currently ongoing development of accommodation uh, for labor mainly and community centers uh, as we speak also. So uh, in a nutshell and in summary, uh, what does Kizad offer? Kizad uh, stands on five main pillars, uh, cost. Uh, so we uh, strive and drive cost uh, as, uh, down as much as possible. So we try to pass the saving to the investors uh, within Kizad by providing them competitive cost rates. Uh, we, we avoid any hidden cost. Uh, structures are very clear uh, in our offering. Uh, speed is also very important because speed is part of cost and therefore getting your business startup and, and getting you up and running as quick as possible is ideal and very important in, in any business setup. And therefore, our one-stop shop and our digital platform allows for seamless integration and very quick uh, setup process. Scale is also very important. Uh, you can uh, start small and grow. We have uh, a lot of room for growth and capacity spreading between our mainland and free zone offering, and therefore uh, you can easily grow within our development uh, community. Uh, what we are developing here at Kizad and as part of our port industrial clusters, we're developing and master planning a community and a city by itself that covers a sustainable approach of uh, uh, investing, living, uh, growing uh, within, within Kizad. Uh, and, and finally, most importantly, uh, predictability. Predictability has been always a question of many of uh, people interested in investing, uh, especially in the food sector. And, and if we look at predictability, uh, this is very important because uh, as people come and step in and want to invest for long term periods, uh, they want to get assurance for uh, the next 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, this covers everything, uh, the cost structures for the services, for the stakeholders fees, for the governance and everything. And therefore, uh, we uh, structure our governance and our offering in a very predictable way that uh, investors can rely and really uh, understand of what they should expect uh, now and in the uh, future also. So uh, this is uh, Kizad uh, in a nutshell, uh, and, and hopefully uh, we'll be more able to discuss even further uh, as we progress in this webinar and in our uh, Q&A session. Khalid, uh, thank you very much. Over to you. Thank you, Mansoor. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to get uh, the questions. We have over 30 questions. I'm excited actually to see that there is a big uh, engagement. Hopefully that we will try to address most of the questions during the Q&A. Now, taking uh, your points further, Mansoor, uh, we have with us a distinguished uh, panelist from Abu Dhabi Agriculture and Food Security Authority who will enlighten us on the investment opportunities in agriculture and food industry. Mr. Sultan Khamis al is a director of the, of the investment division at the authority. The floor is yours, your, uh, Sultan.
سلطان عايز تجيب ورقه Yes, I don't have any uh, devices, phone, anything. Okay, anyway. Well, uh, thank you for the introduction. Brief about the DEFSA and the investment opportunities in agriculture and food uh, industry sector. So, uh, Abu Dhabi, ADAPSA stands for Abu Dhabi Agriculture Food Safety Authority. Uh, uh, ADAPSA is the regulator authority in the agriculture. Uh, Sultan, sorry for interruption. I, I think the voice is not clear. Uh, from my side, it's fine. I don't know what is. Uh, so if you can mute on your other screen, probably that would help. Uh, no. What about now? Yeah, that's fine. Hello? Yeah, it's fine, Sultan. Go ahead. Hello? Is it, okay? Is it okay now? Yes, yes, Sultan. It's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine, Sultan. Go ahead. Hello? It was fine if you can if you can just uh, put the speaker you can you can just speak it's fine. Is it okay now? Okay now? Yes. Yes. Well, I don't know why it was just you. Before it wasn't. Okay, I will try to make it uh, very low. In this case, now what about it? Yeah, it's fine. Go ahead. Is it okay now, Khalid? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Okay, very good. So I have to repeat what I have said. I don't think that everybody heard it. Khalid, thank you for the introduction and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us this webinar. Today, I will give you uh, an overview about ADAPSA investment opportunity in agriculture and food sector. Uh, Abu Dhabi Agriculture and Food Safety uh, uh, is, uh, ADAPSA is the regulator authority in the agriculture, food safety and food security, biosecurity in the Emirates, of Abu Dhabi, as well as it's the mandate of agricultural investment in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. Uh, we will be inshallah touching upon the following uh, few sites, more uh, details about the opportunity in, in agriculture. Uh, so I will move to the other uh, slide. So here we will give an uh, uh, introduction about uh, DAFSA. So uh, we have four main sector in the investment opportunity, agriculture production, animal protection, uh, food ind industries, and veterinary industry and logistics. We will go by details for everyone. Uh, of course, agriculture production is very important, especially now with the pandemic, prove that the investment in food and agriculture is very important and crucial compared to any other sector. So uh, investing in this in this sector is really really very important. The Dutch I think even in the government as an overall. Uh, so we have priority for the investment, uh, and we can just uh, take one or two of one of them. We call the storage, vegetable uh, industries in general, uh, and and uh, so many uh, opportunities that we have details for everyone. Uh, the, the other opportunities is uh, related to animal protection, from voluntary protection to meat protection, milk protection, uh, uh, aquaculture aqua like fish farming and other things is very crucial and important these days to, to have uh, such as investments, especially uh, with the food uh, related to food security. Um, food production as well is very, very important. Uh, as you can see, we have vegetable-related industries, uh, production of, uh, of so many uh, food uh, industries. And I think uh, we can 
I won't go one by one, but it is very, very important that we can provide the presentation later on to whoever asked for it. Okay, veterinary industry, uh, this one is really important. Today, we don't have really industries in the, in the, in the, in the country here for veterinary industries. Uh, we as a DAS, uh, we always, uh, uh, we have a budget more than 20 million dirham for medication, vaccinations, uh, and, uh, and uh, air tags, and such as a lot of industries. And I can see there are a lot of opportunity for, for investors really to look at the sector and and uh, and we have uh, a, a profile and and visibility study. If you ask for it, we can provide with. In uh, this slide, you're gonna see the investment uh, uh, map uh, for Adafsa and our also stakeholders. Uh, we have a different uh, plot in all over the Emirate. Uh, the sizes started from uh, 1,000 square meters up to uh, a million square meter. And this is, I think it's very good opportunity for such as project which need biosecurity, uh, such as voluntary and other uh, uh, protections. For the small industries, maybe you, you're gonna need like with the KZAD or our other uh, stakeholder that we have a partnership with them. Uh, what kind of incentives that we give uh, for investors? Actually, we have uh, put a very attractive value for renting land and investment assets, uh, as well as we provide a technical and administrative device, advice for, uh, for the investors to help them to uh, start their business. Uh, uh, reliable uh, data. We have uh, uh, data re related to any uh, statistics requirement for, for uh, making a visibility study. Uh, and we, he will also get the support uh, services once he uh, starts uh, applying for the uh, investment opportunity. Uh, the investor journey is very uh, slim. Don't see like it is eight. It is very slim. It is starting from apply, then assist, then approve. It is very short, but uh, uh, the only thing that it's need uh, to get approved from uh, several uh, committees internally. Uh, and uh, we have a website that we can get more details how to apply uh, through our investment uh, website. Uh, it's very straightforward. Uh, and uh, any other questions, we are ready here to answer. Uh, this is all. That's all about it. Thank you.